It is the end of April 2021, and you know what? It is time to take a look at the farm. So what you're gonna see today is a mixture of footage from the ground and also some drone footage. So we're gonna kinda of give you a mix of the two to give you a really good idea of just what the farm looks like here in April. We're starting right here at the front of the farm. This is where Lori has all of the evergreens. That way everything that you see at the front of the farm as you come in is nice and green. So the first set of trees we have here would be our guavas and our laurel bay leaf. All of these trees are springing back into life now that we're here in the spring. The white guava in particular lost all of its leaves. It's getting all of its leaves back, which is great to see. Next up as we move back into the citrus area would be our four loquat trees and they're doing all right. We've got new growth that's pushing out here. Actually some brand new beautiful leaves on the champagne loquat, looks great. Uh, the big gym struggling a little bit, but for the most part, we're getting that beautiful spring flush of growth, which these trees really need in order to get us through the summertime. This will be their first summer in the ground. So you guys can see the citrus trees are nice and small, definitely not very big yet to give us much blockage, but you can see kind of in the background, we've got the pasture area, which just looks incredible. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and wrap around the corner and let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things that are around our chicken coop and run. We have our chickens in the background and these would be our kumquats. Just leafing out and flowering look incredible. They're very, very happy in the ground here. We have our new Nagami kumquat that actually has some flowers on it. It pretty much stunted over the winter, but now that we're coming into the spring, it's now leafing out as well. But the kumquats look great. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing around the corner and take a look at the ever-bearing mulberries. So we didn't do a harvest on these last night, but we've been harvesting off these trees every single night this week. We now have almost two gallons, those Ziploc gallon bags, full of just these ever-bearing mulberries. And again, the size of these, I'll tell you, we took these off of the mother plant on the old farm, which was climatized to Arizona. I'm really starting to think that that is the key to larger fruit on these trees and the production is just massive. I've got three mulberries here, and you know what? It's early morning. It's breakfast time. Mmm. Boy, that's good. You can see the broiler chickens are about six weeks old, so they have about two more weeks here on the farm, which should work out pretty good because I think we're going to wind up having a little less green on that pasture here over the next few weeks. Now what we're going to do is we're going to slide on over to the Western Orchard and you'll see it's just coming along fantastic. So this will give you an up close shot of the trees. I'll tell you what, we've got a couple of these trees that are taller than me. So the peach trees obviously are the first ones out of dormancy. They're just looking great. Now we do pull all of the fruit that's trying to ripen off of these trees. I think we snagged all of it, 
but each one of these trees probably had anywhere from 15 to 20 to 30 or 40 fruit on there. So these trees have only been in the ground for a year. So this is their second year in the ground. Definitely do not want them trying to put on fruit. We want them doing what you see here, which is get nice and big, establish those roots, and really establish the tree itself before it fruits. We've got a piece of fruit right there. So you can see already about the size of a golf ball. And I know I might uh, make a few of you cringe, but that can't stay on the tree. <laughs> That's uh, not what we want. And some sucker growth. Let's get that off of there. Boy, these trees just look beautiful in the spring. So a couple of replacement trees uh, we, that we lost to damage. This is the peach apricot plum hybrid, which is cross pollinated by that plum cot that's right over there. So these two nice and close. Again, these were just planted in late October, November of last year. So coming out of dormancy really, really well and coming on nice and strong. So here's a tree that we definitely did not thin all that well. This is a burgundy plum. You can see a little plumlet right there. What's that? Probably almost the size of a quarter. It can't stay. <laughs> oh my goodness, there's several. Yeah, we missed a few on this one for sure. We got fruit all over the place in here. A couple trees that either have just come out of dormancy or definitely not going to make it. Good to see we finally have one of our persimmons. One that still hasn't broken dormancy, but the scratch test says that it should soon. So this is our angel red pomegranate and check this out. I mean, this thing is just exploding with flowers. Just a beautiful tree. You know, we're keeping them caged because of the rabbits. What's really cool is you really get just that kind of firework um, explosion that comes out. It literally is what this looks like. And of course we have pomegranates on here that are going to try to ripen up this fall and uh, yeah not going to let it do that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to head back to the back 40 as we call it. What this is, and I'm gonna try to get a good shot for you guys, this back half is where we keep our wood chip mulch. You'll see that big pile back there. In addition, this area is about two acres to give you an idea of size. This is about a two acre area. And of course, this is where we have our pecan trees and our larger mulberry trees across the back of the property. We're back here. This is the backdrop to the farm. The farmhouse is out that way. And you can see we've got our four pecan trees. Now we planted two types, a type one and a type two. You need them for cross pollination. Now out of those four trees, only two broke dormancy. Pretty confident the other two are not gonna make it. Unfortunately, they're both type two <laughs> pecan trees. Either way, we do have some pecan trees that are growing here on the farm, which was exciting to see. Now, of course, we need to eventually come back this fall and find a couple of type one pecan trees to replace those two. So as we go across the back, you're gonna see the rest of our mulberry trees. All the mulberry trees across the back of the property here are Pakistan black mulberries and Persian white mulberries. Those trees we're gonna have on the back of the farm as a backdrop to the farm itself. And also for the production, in addition, we want shade and we also wanna have livestock fodder. The idea, on this back acreage is to eventually have our larger livestock like cattle back here and be able to do some rotations with smaller livestock like sheep, goats, and probably some poultry of some sort. So a quick shot of one of our black Pakistan mulberries. They did try to put on fruit. Of course, we don't want them to. And then back here, because we are gonna have larger livestock back here eventually, we have our taller cages and we want these trees to grow taller. So we're gonna really start training them to be nice tall trees as, a, as opposed to shorter, more wide trees. We really kind of want to want both. We want a tall, wide tree. In fact, I think there's a white mulberry that we have from the old farm I want to show you down here and give you a really good idea of what this is going to look like. This will give you an idea of what we want these trees to look like. This tree was actually in a pot for a year here on the farm. We planted it this winter. You can see a nice six plus 
tall foot tree. And there's actually some fruit in here. This is one of the white mulberries that we air layered off the old farm. And let's see, oh, here we go. There's a piece of fruit. So that would be a white mulberry. Now we're not big fans of the way these taste, but I'm still gonna try it. Hmm. Mm. Simple, kind of a mellow sweetness. Hmm. This one will probably go to the goats. Now what I wanna try to get a shot of for you guys is our livestock acre. So I'm gonna pull back this way. You're gonna be able to look down. It's kind of hard to make out. We've done, we've done a little bit of uh, tractor work back here and we've set our corner posts, but this is a one acre parcel that's immediately adjacent to that back 40 we were just talking about. And this is where we're gonna really keep all of our smaller livestock and probably have some, some stables essentially to keep those livestock. At least that's the plan. So you can get an idea of this open space. We have not touched this basically at all. Now what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna slide from this back acreage here and go back into the Eastern Orchard, which is where we have all of our figs and palm fruit. kind of give you a closer up shot of our fig trees back here. All of the figs have broken dormancy and are just bursting back to life. We have multiple varieties back here. We're excited about all of them, but there's one in particular that we're really excited about. That's the Vila de Bordeaux. We grew this tree actually from a cutting that we got from one of the viewers out there, Victoria, I know you watch. This is your Violet de Bordeaux cutting that you gave us here. And you can see this tree has been in the ground for just a few months and it's actually growing really well. I'm excited to see how this tree does because it's kind of known for slow growth and that kind of thing, an excellent fig, but not only is it growing well, there's figs on it. Now we're gonna do, we're gonna walk up front. We need to take a look at the jujubes. So the jujubes have broken dormancy really well. There's a lot of flowering on these small jujubes already. In fact, all three of them have a tremendous amount of flowering, but fantastic dormancy break on these with a lot of leaving out, which is exactly what we want. They've only been in the ground for a couple of months. So that, the, uh, that leaf matter is what pulls the chlorophyll down into the roots and allow these, allows these things to really take off. So super excited to see that and all three of them doing great. Now what we wanna do is peek at these pears because they look fantastic too. All of these trees have now broken dormancy. In fact, the last trees to do it were the Asian pears. They're finally out of dormancy. And what's really cool to see is the seckle pears. Reed actually took cuttings from the old farm off of our seckle pear tree that we never got fruit off of, but these two trees here are already setting fruit or at least attempting to do so. So one last thing before we slide into the mulberry area and the rest of the berries are these apple trees. Now we had planted some Einsheimers right here that were bare root from Greg Peterson and the Urban Farm Fruit Tree Program that we had a special order. And actually, we actually have fruit on one of these Einsheimers. So you can see there are three little applets and yeah, we can't let that, uh, we can't let that happen. Sorry guys. One of the things as you're looking across here at these apples, these are all apples we got from Reed and we put these in the ground in the fall. So they were just whips, single whips that we trimmed back and pruned back during the wintertime. You can see they've broken dormancy and just burst into life. They are growing like crazy, which is exactly what we see from these trees. So really excited to see the explosive growth we're already getting out of these, what amounts to about a five month old tree.
This will give you a really good shot of our mulberries. We have our Shangri-La mulberries that are the larger trees here that lead back into our two contorted mulberries. We're gonna show you what the Shangri-La mulberries look like here in a second, but one of the things that I've been most happy about is a, a couple of different varieties of blackberries. So let's go ahead and take a peek at those. This is the Colombian giant blackberry. This little bush already has fruit on it and has really started to explode here now that we're nice and warm, which was great to see. Once we got into the 90s, this bush started taking off, which is precisely what we want. We haven't tried this variety before, but so far, seeing fruit on there, seeing this strong growth is encouraging as we go into the summer. Of course, how it survives the summer is the real test, but so far it's doing pretty good. And then of course, these other two you'll recognize. This is the Triple Crown Blackberry. It has fruit all over the place in here, which is great. Really love the flavor of this variety. Very easy to propagate. We took this as a cutting from the old farm and look at this new cane that's coming out of here. I mean, <laughs> that's just incredible. That thing is probably four feet long. So now what we really need is we really need some balance on this bush to come this way. But one of the things with this variety is we know this variety has a tendency to send out runners very, very aggressively, which is the reason it's by itself in this bed. Eventually, we're gonna see these canes popping up everywhere in this bed, which is great because then of course we could share. Last two blackberries in the update. This is our Primark blackberry. I'm pretty sure this is the Freedom variety loaded with fruit, which is pretty typical. Very strong new growth here, which is great to see. Gonna definitely need to get this uncaged here over the next couple of weeks. And then of course, that's the Loch Ness Blackberry behind me. This one has a little bit of growth on it, not very much. Really not too sure about this particular variety. It was another test, and so we'll have to see. If it doesn't uh, start growing here soon, it's gonna run out of time because uh, we're almost to May, which means we're almost to 120. So I might be a little bit shadowed, which is fine, because I don't mind being overshadowed by one of these. So this is one of our Shangri-La mulberries. You can see it's about six feet tall. It's a beautiful, beautiful tree. This time of year is its happy place. Beautiful green leaves, and it puts on a lot of strong growth. More importantly, this time of year, we start getting production. It's gonna probably be hard to pick up on camera, but we've got some ripe mulberries in here. And you can bet, I'm gonna try one. So that's a Shangri-La mulberry. That one, as far as flavor, is about as good as it gets. You can see just a beautiful looking berry, probably about an inch long. So this is a little bit shorter. This one looks like it might be a little bit overripe, which is uh, okay. Mm. Oh man, beautiful balance of tart and sweet. You can eat the stems, but I'd rather not. Mm. Ah, it's really good. Now what I'm gonna do is I wanna head over and take a look at the pigs. We've got the old pig area that's struggling a little bit with the cover crops, but we are finding that the sorghum sudan grass is doing pretty good, and also the cow peas. The cow peas are coming up okay. We actually took our first four to the processor yesterday it went as well as it can. And actually the loading of it went great. We got these three left and you know, we're just gonna, we're gonna make sure we spend some time with these three before they, uh, before they head off as well. Um, but I'll tell you, we really enjoy raising pigs and uh, you know, obviously we en enjoy the result, but there we go. Don't eat my foot. So last but not least would be the vineyard garden. We'll give you a good shot of how this is how this is slowly coming together and looking as things finally come to life.
These just broke dormancy a couple weeks ago, and there's already fruit developing on these vines. Not much more to talk about here yet in the vineyard garden. The, um, the roses look fantastic and the garden beds were kind of prepping for the upcoming fall and next year spring season. So we've got a lot of things going on there. The fall and winter beds are going to seed and that's actually kind of what I want to show you next. This right here would be a beet that is going to flower and seed. So really excited to actually get some beet seeds that are climatized here to Arizona. We're seeing that in a few different spots. And what you'll also see right over here would be a salad green going to seed as well. We've got a few of those in this bed. And then of course we have some ripe beets in here as well that are ready to go ahead and harvest, which we'll be doing here over the next week or two. But overall, this bed is about ready to get converted into a cover crop. And we just planted cow peas in here yesterday to see how those are gonna do. But kind of cool to see this bed wrapping up for the season. Really excited to see the farm coming back to life. You know, this time of year for Lori and I, it's the end of our livestock season. So we have pigs on the farm for a couple more weeks. We have our broiler chickens for a couple more weeks. We've spent every waking hour <laughs> this year getting the farm to where it is today. And Lori and I are definitely ready for a break. But at the same time, we wanna make sure that we're sharing all of the growth because as we wanna wind down here going into the summer, all of the growth and particularly the trees are just starting to take off. So just wanna thank you for joining us today. If you haven't done so already, hey, subscribe to the channel. And you know, share it with your friends and family. If you've got anybody that you know that might be interested in this, interested in growing food, interested in real food security, this is the place to be. Definitely share the content. If you have any questions or comments you guys know, leave those in the comment section down below. Love, inter love interacting with you there. And of course our Amazon shop, I'll leave a link down in the description, a free painless way to help support the channel here. If you start with that link, it doesn't matter what you buy, you help to support the farm. So just wanna thank you for joining us today and remind you, if we can farm on the edge of nowhere, so can you.